Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, the latest on a shooting on the northeast side that sent two people to the hospital. And coming up, a second vaccine gets approval, but COVID cases are still on the rise. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the very latest. Taking a look outside with live cam, 37 degrees at 430 this morning. It's one of those mornings where you can definitely see your breath. You know, also when you get in the car, you can still see your breath. It hasn't warmed up yet. Mike will have our forecast in just a bit. Or you just didn't want to get out of bed yeah. at all. And that's OK, too. Good it's morning, okay. everybody. It is Friday. It is December 18th, and it's good to have Sarah Costas with us here on a Friday morning. Always good to be here during the week. And, you know, two, ni two nights ago, mm -hmm. I covered all of my plants. Right. I still had some that just didn't didn't you know, quite make it. Got a little bit of burn. I was happy enough to do it again last night there there's not as widespread a freeze though this morning as, yeah. as expected it's still pretty darn cold out there mm -hmm. obviously like you said you can still see your breath and, and bundle up and then uh, we've got some mostly clear skies right now we are going to see the clouds increasing throughout the day and uh, we do have some rain chances tomorrow the good news is it almost looks like the rain chances are a bit better late late tonight and early tomorrow morning more on that in a second 37 right now so flirting around freezing yeah around the uh, hondo bernie stage stinson you know in your backyard in and around those areas that's just one thermometer there so having your plants covered is probably a pretty good idea the humidity which is still low but it did come up quite a bit from yesterday and so that's why temperatures haven't cooled off as much as what they did yesterday also we're going to see the clouds increasing throughout the day mold is on the the low side this morning and so we'll have mostly clear skies and temperatures we may drop down another couple of degrees yeah it's going to be a chilly morning and then we'll have clouds like i said increasing throughout the day it is going to try to warm up, but obviously with the cloud cover, it's going to be blocking the sun somewhat. So we'll make it up to 62, about where we were, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday. And then perhaps a shower later on tonight. Like I said, slightly better rain chances around here tomorrow. Then we're going to be clearing out. Nice, mild temperatures, cool mornings, warm afternoons going into about the middle of next week. Then another big front's moving on through here. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Friday morning. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, let's take a look at the screen right now. No accidents there, but we do have two stalled vehicles, according to TransGuide. First one's going to be eastbound US 90 at 36th Street. Second one's going to be here. It's going to be eastbound. Well, I thought I had it, but it's also eastbound I-10 right there at the Caliber Bandera exit. Take a look at some drive times here. If you're coming southbound from 281, you got a 30 minute ride into the city. And let's do if you're coming 87 from Lavernia uh, westbound into the city, 24 minutes. Trans guide time 281 at the quarry. Looking good right now. No cars on the roadway. Always good there. Mark, sir, back to you. Nick, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to find those responsible for a shooting on the west side. The sent a man to the hospital overnight. Happened just after 11 last night in the 1600 block of West Military, just north of Highway 90. SAPD says the man was shot in the leg by two other male suspects in a nearby apartment complex. The victim was taken to the hospital after he got away and called for help. A man and a younger male were taken to the hospital last night after a shooting on the northeast side. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says it happened just after 9 o'clock in the 8100 block of Whistler between Windcrest and Converse. Officials say the conditions of the two victims are unknown at this time. It's unclear what led up to the shooting and the details are limited. BCSO says there are no known, known suspects and the investigation is ongoing. This morning, a second second coronavirus vaccine gets the OK from the FDA as the nation looks to turn the corner on the deadly outbreak. But in the last 24 hours, more than 3,600 people have lost their lives. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington with the latest. Amid the rising number of COVID cases, an FDA advisory panel approves a second vaccine made by Moderna. Like we have a favorable vote. Unlike Pfizer's vaccine, Moderna's can be stored in regular freezers, making it easier to distribute to more remote parts of the country. Studies show the Moderna vaccine is 94% effective in preventing symptomatic cases of COVID-19, similar to the Pfizer vaccine already being used nationwide. Health officials hope the two vaccines take the wind out of the surging number of cases, but the COVID tracking project is reporting a record high number of deaths from the virus in the U.S. for the second week in a row. Intensive care units across Southern California now at full capacity. You have to pick which one of your patients has the best chances of making it, and that's one you're going to have to give most of your care to. 
California is not alone. A new forecast shows the southeast faces an especially high risk for a surge in cases, including Atlanta, the Carolinas, and Tennessee. Experts are urging governors to take a stand against holiday events because they say this ongoing surge is the worst yet. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling Fox News. You don't have to cancel things. You can still spend time with your family. I'm just asking people to be careful. And it's a two front fight from the health emergency to the economic crisis on Capitol Hill. There is still no deal for an economic relief bill, but both sides insist that they are close with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell telling his colleagues to be prepared to work through the weekend if they can't strike an agreement today. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News in Washington. In Bear County, here's where we stand with the coronavirus cases. The seven day average rising once again. It now stands at 1,100 cases per day on average. That's a rise of 62 from the previous report. Our hospitals are also seeing a rise in COVID-19 patients, 837 people in area hospitals, 272 in ICU, 134 are on ventilators. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott is hopeful the state is on a path to restore some normalcy. He says 224,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine are expected to be delivered to Texas hospitals by today. And by the end of the month, 1 million Texans are expected to be vaccinated. First doses will be given to frontline workers like doctors and nurses. The vulnerable living in nursing homes could also get vaccines soon. Also, Governor Greg Abbott says he hopes teachers will be near the front of the line to get the vaccine. It's an effort that both Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Judge Nelson Wolf have urged the governor to make happen. 436, 37 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, why Jill Biden is fighting back after some people suggested she should drop the doctor title from her name. Look back at last night's loss as the Spurs took on the Houston Rockets in their final preseason game. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It is cold this morning. You might want to bundle up or just stay in bed. But Mike will let us know if things will warm up when we come back. Federal authorities are expressing concerns about a long undetected intrusion into U.S. computer systems they suspect was carried out by Russian hackers. The nation's cybersecurity agency warned of a grave risk to government and private networks. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency says the hack compromised federal agencies and critical infrastructure in a sophisticated attack that was hard to detect. The Department of Energy says it was among those that had been hacked. The attack creates a fresh foreign policy problem for President Donald Trump in his final days in office. The president has made no public statements about the breach, but President-elect Joe Biden spoke forcefully about the hack, declaring he will make it a top priority when he takes office. President-elect Joe Biden has reportedly selected Congresswoman Deb Haaland as his Interior Secretary nominee. Haaland would be the first Native American to lead the department. In 2018, she was one of the first Native American women to serve in Congress after she was elected to represent New Mexico's first congressional district. An aide to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi gave Hallen's selection her blessing. Democrats have a thin majority in the House right now. It would be lessened if Hallen is confirmed. Well, stock markets will try to continue a winning streak after Wall Street hit a new high yesterday. Investigators were optimistic about a new economic stimulus and continued coronavirus vaccine development despite a spike in U.S. unemployment claims. The government reported the highest level of new jobless claims in three months. Overnight, Wall Street's benchmark S&P 500 index gained for a third day. The Dow gained 148 points yesterday. To close at 30,303, the Nasdaq also finished with a high record. Our San Antonio Spurs just couldn't get it done last night in their loss to the Houston Rockets in their final preseason game of the season. DeMar DeRozan scored 21 points for the Spurs. Rookie Devin Vassell had 18 off the bench. DeJounte Murray added 17 points, 10 rebounds. Patty Mills scored 16 but LaMarcus Aldridge had a rough night, shot three of 12, missing all five three-point attempts and had just six points for the Spurs. So the Spurs go 0-3 in the preseason. They fall last night in Houston, 128-106. Next up, the Spurs regular season home opener, or opener rather, Wednesday. That's against the Memphis Grizzlies. That game is set for a tip-off of 7 o'clock at the FedEx Forum in Memphis. So it is not the home opener, as I accidentally said. <laughs> It's okay, we all make mistakes, Mark. It's early. 
I know. Come on, Spurs. 442, 70, uh, 37 degrees. Well, still ahead, if you're still shopping for Christmas, there are several recalls you need to know about. We'll tell you about the products that are affected. And Jill Biden, who has a doctorate in education, is being told she should drop the doctor title from her name. We'll have her response next. Welcome back. The wife of President-elect Joe Biden is fighting back, responding to that op-ed saying the next first lady should drop the doctor title from her name. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Dr. Jill Biden fires back. It was really the tone of it that I think that, um, you know, he called me kiddo. Overnight, America's next first lady defending the title she worked so hard to achieve. One of the things I'm most proud of is uh, is my doctorate. I mean, I worked so hard for it. And, uh, and my, you know, Joe came when I defended my thesis. Earlier this week, the Wall Street Journal published the op-ed in which the author claimed Biden should not be called doctor because her degree is not in medicine. The comments sparking outrage, many calling the op-ed sexist and misogynistic. I've been suppressing my Irishness for a long time. I was just overwhelmed by uh, how gracious people were. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about the famous faces coming out to support the future First Lady. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. A safety alert for parents. If you have a Graco play yard, there's a recall that could affect you. It's for an inclined sleeper, the type the government is working to ban. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has that and more in today's recall roundup. Parent alert, Graco is recalling more than 50,000 inclined sleepers because of a suffocation risk. The sleepers are accessories to four different pack and play play yards. No incidents are known, but similar products have been linked to 93 infant deaths. The play yard can still be used, but not the sleeper. Parents contact Graco. <laughs> More than 20,000 camping stoves are recalled. This involves certain Camp Chef portable gas stoves sold at Walmart and sporting goods stores since last year. Potential gas leaks pose a fire danger. Contact the company for a fix. <laughs> If you're planning yard work, do not use this. Fiskars Brands is recalling more than a half million 16-foot pole saws and pruners. The telescoping pole can separate, causing the saw blade and pruner head to fall. Contact Fiskars for a refund. <laughs> Black & Decker is recalling 82,000 craftsmen corded chainsaws. The problem? Under some circumstances, the chainsaw can start unexpectedly. These were sold at Lowe's and other hardware stores since last year. Contact Craftsman. <laughs> and if your toddler has these light-up rain boots sold at Target, take them back. Washington Shoe Company is recalling some 77,000 pairs sold this year. The handles and the rivets can come off, creating a choking danger for little ones. As always, if you need more information, it's on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 37 degrees out of the airport. We'll talk to Mike in just a moment about after your Friday morning. But first, we're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis. Yes, Sarah, right now things look good out there. No accidents. He's dealing with that one stalled vehicle, but let's just take a look at the screen here. No heavy pockets of traffic. Everything looks good right now on the highways. Just zero eastbound U.S. Highway 90 at 36th Street. We've got a stalled vehicle. Looks like there's, it's on the shoulder. There's another vehicle there. Hopefully it's getting towed out of the area. All right, 37 at Jones looks pretty good on the southeast side there, flowing smoothly on that eastbound lane or that northbound lane, I'm sorry. I-10 at West Avenue. One, two, three cars on the roadway and 10 at Woodlawn down the highway there. That looks good as well. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Mike's got a picture here, a festive reminder that we live in a beautiful city. Oh, my goodness so gracious. Pretty. Yeah, so many beautiful pictures this time of year. And uh, look at that. The Tower of the Americas is all dressed up in Christmas lights. And then there is the little crescent moon out there. And just above that is Jupiter and, of course, Saturn, that little faint dot near that and they are getting closer and closer together and Monday is the day when they are going to be at their closest point at least what's visible in the sky so Sunday night is going to be good for viewing Monday uh, early and Monday uh, evening is going to be good for viewing as well it's a great picture thank you very much for the case at connect shot going to have a, a decent looking sunrise this morning we have a few extra clouds hanging around here we do have some moisture which is now starting to move in the past couple of days we've had this very dry air yesterday we had those just gorgeous blue skies out there now we've 
got some moisture coming in upstairs in the atmosphere. We will start to see humidity at the surface, but this is going to help out with some high clouds starting to, to move on in here this morning, and then we're just going to be clouding up as the day rolls on with all this uh, moisture coming in here from the uh, west and from the southwest. And uh, as far as any precipitation. I don't think we'll see anything. We're not going to see anything today, I should say, but tonight there is a chance for it. A couple of showers perhaps, but then tomorrow morning it is actually looking like a better chance for some rain. So the clouds continue to increase. We get the moisture upstairs and then also down here at the surface. And uh, like I said, maybe a, a light sprinkle late tonight, but rain chances are now this tends to broad brush things again, but uh, I think rain chances are going up a little bit more tomorrow morning and that'll be throughout the first portion of the day and then by noon everything starts to end from west to east and we're going to clear out and it's going to be a beautiful day after that. So the humidity is going to go up and it's going to be fairly high later on today. Tomorrow morning the front moves on through here. It's not going to be a real strong cold front. It will allow temperatures because of the drier air. It's going to allow temperatures to cool down. Not anything brutally cold. Then humidity starts to go back up toward the middle of next week. Then the bottom drops out. We got a really strong front moving on in here by uh, looks like a mm, say midday on Wednesday will be warm right ahead of that and then it's going to get windy and temperatures going to be dropping down. So a couple of clouds way off there uh, to the west of us are starting to show up right now and all these clouds will continue to move on in with the next big storm system. Not as strong as the one that is now exiting the northeast to dump those feet of snow up there and temperatures other than caribou Maine, nothing just really jumps off the off the map but there's some brutally cold 11 degrees excuse me 11 times 4 44 degrees below zero in Yellowknife and this massive cold air is going to start to work its way down in toward the Great Lakes and that is what is going to push that big strong front through here by next Wednesday. 57 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Clouds will continue to thicken up throughout the day and then a high temperature up to 62 with basically cloudy skies today. Maybe still a leftover little peak of sunshine, perhaps a shower late tonight, but we'll have some uh, better rain chances tomorrow. Put about a 40% or even better chance of rain on that. And then we're going to clear out in the afternoon. Sunny skies, beautiful Sunday, Monday. Winter begins early Monday morning about this time or a little soon Monday morning and it's not going to be, be very wintry in the afternoons Monday, Tuesday and then that big strong front Wednesday just in time for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. There it is. We've been waiting to see it pop up on the seven day forecast. Yep, I put it on there for Christmas Eve just because. Because we can. Because we can. <laughs> and we thank you for it. Thank you, Mr. Snowman Ty. Right now, 452, 37 degrees. Up next, why Chad Bozeman's final film performance is getting even more praise. Victory numbers 112, Fireball 2. Daily 4 numbers 4900, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 16, 17, 28, 31, 32. Texas 2 step 2, 26, 31, 32. Bonus ball 26. Lots of new shows and movies out on streaming today. Bless uh, more Hollywood actors say they are getting the COVID-19 vaccine. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. More praise for Chadwick Boseman in his final role. George C. Wolfe directed the Black Panther star in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, based on the play by August Wilson, and he says Boseman blew him away. I think it's one of the great performances ever, one is one of the greatest performances ever captured on film. I honestly believe that. So, and I think that it is vibrant and emotionally raw and real. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is out today on Netflix. Also out today, the docuseries On Point follows students at New York's School of American Ballet as they try to perfect a performance of The Nutcracker. That's on Disney+. Plus. Sir Ian McKellen's latest role, vaccinated. The 81-year-old got his first dose of the coronavirus vaccine this week in London. I am feeling so happy and relieved and optimistic and everything that I haven't been really feeling for a long time now. I couldn't be happier. He also says he has no hesitation in recommending it to everyone. I had a dream. And hopefully multiple Grammy winner Billie Eilish got everything she wanted today. It's her birthday. She's 19. While Oscar winner Brad Pitt is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
It's about three till five, 38 degrees. Still head on GMSA. More details on increased concern from federal officials about a long undetected cybersecurity intrusion into the U.S. that officials suspect was carried out by Russian hackers. And are you ready to try out Pepsi's Cocoa Cola? We'll tell you about this unique take on soda ahead in your morning tech bites. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, SAPD trying to figure out who shot a man in the stomach overnight over on the west side. Plus reaction from President-elect Joe Biden on a recent cybersecurity threat that could be caused by Russian hackers. Not as cold as yesterday morning right now, 38 degrees. Is anybody freezing in our area? Mike will get us updated on temperatures. That is coming up. But first, good morning to you. It is Friday, the 18th of December. It's officially a week away from Christmas. I know, yes, and Mike is already talking about a forecast that includes Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Yeah, we've got a big, uh, big front, which still looks like it's on schedule to get here just in time for uh, Christmas Eve and, as well as Christmas Day, keeping uh, some cold temperatures around here or bringing back some colder temperatures, I should say. Yeah, it's pretty chilly right now, 38 with uh, really no wind to speak of and mostly clear skies, but that's going to be changing as the day rolls on and temperatures will make it back up into the uh, low 60s later on today. And then we will see clouds developing as the day rolls on. The aquifer did go up two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens. No mountain cedars showed up yesterday. We haven't really had a, a heck of a lot. Now we do have a front moving through tomorrow may shake up the trees just a little bit, but it will be interesting to see what then happens down the road as far as the big front coming in here next week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Upstairs in the atmosphere, you know, we've had a lot of uh, just gorgeous blue skies the past couple of days, but now the moisture, this lighter shade of gray is starting to work its way back on in here. So that will eventually lead to more clouds around here as the uh, afternoon rolls on and actually later on this morning, and then we'll see uh, mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. A shower late tonight, maybe kind of doubt it, but we do have in the overnight hours and tomorrow morning a better rain chance. Rain chances have actually gone up somewhat, and then we'll have sunshine in the afternoon when that front moves on through here. It's more of a Pacific front, so it's not going to really bring in any colder air, just drier air. That, though, will allow temperatures to uh, to cool down then Sunday morning in the next couple of mornings. Then next week, again, we start off on the warm side, but a big front just in time for Christmas and actually Christmas Eve and well, kind of the day before that. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, sir? Uh, right now, Mike, no, just a stalled vehicle, but no accidents. Things still look pretty good out in the city. I'm not seeing any heavy pockets of traffic uh, anywhere. Uh, still dealing with this eastbound U.S. Highway 90 at 36th Street. We got some trans guy footage of that. First, let's take a look at some drive times here. All right, so if you're westbound 1604 from I-35 to I-10, you got a 16 minute ride and then back east from 1604 on 1604 from I 10 to 35. You got a 15 minute ride. Not looking bad there at all. All right, here's 90 and 36. You see right here that stalled vehicle on the shoulder. Just use caution when passing it. Hopefully, it can get cleared up soon. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, San Antonio police are trying to figure out what led to a shooting on the city's west side overnight. It happened in the 200 block of Jesse Avenue near Old Highway 90. SAPD says a man in his 20s was shot in the stomach during the incident and taken to the hospital. Police say they are still looking for a crime scene, and so far they have not mentioned any suspects in the case. This morning we're learning more about a cyber attack that targeted the United States government. It is being called a grave risk. The Energy Department's Nuclear Security Agency was among those targeted. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, the number of government agencies impacted by a suspected Russian cyber attack is growing. A new analysis by Microsoft shows the breach is international, with at least seven countries affected, including Canada and Israel. But 80% of the accounts affected were in the U.S. What's so scary about it is we could wait to see any decision from the hackers, appear to be the Russians, on what they choose to do with those networks. The Departments of Commerce, Treasury, Homeland Security and State, even the National Institutes of Health have been compromised. And now ABC News confirms the Energy Department's Nuclear Security Agency, which oversees the nuclear weapons stockpile, has been breached. According to the department, the hack impacted non-classified systems and not those involving national security functions. But intelligence officials acknowledge the hack, quote, poses a grave risk to federal and local governments as well as critical infrastructure. What I'm really worried about is what they might do 
beyond spying to mess with our public and its trust of its institutions. Sources say the breach allowed Russians to view emails of U.S. officials apparently going undetected for nearly six months. The White House has not issued a response to the attack. Senator Mitt Romney calls that silence stunning. A cyber hack of this nature is really the modern equivalent of uh, almost of Russian bombers um, reportedly flying undetected over the entire country. And they didn't drop bombs, but they, they had the capacity to show that our, our defense is extraordinarily inadequate. Investigators say it'll take weeks, maybe even months, to determine the cyber attack's overall impact. Andrew Dimber, ABC News in Washington. Lawmakers in Washington seem to be close to advancing another stimulus package to help the economy deal with the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. One sector closely watching this debate is folks in the aviation biz. They operate the airports, including right here in San Antonio. Our Samuel King is here now. Good morning, Samuel. And Samuel, how much are airports expected to get? Well, good morning to you, Sarah and Mark. It could be anywhere from three to four billion dollars divided among airports across the country. And of course, that would be a major boost. Air travel has plummeted during the pandemic, and that's not only affected the airlines, but also the airports themselves and people who work there. Many of them have seen their hours cut. El San Antonio received more than four forty. $40 million in the first stimulus package for airports. And Director of Airports Jesus Sainz says that's helped support the airport financially, but more help is needed. We're very concerned, uh, obviously, as everyone is, but uh, we encourage everyone to continue to be safe in their practices. And these types of initiatives and assistance will certainly um, help. Include money for airports to help concession companies. Those were the ones who provide food and retail services out at the airport. Many of them have had to lay off employees or at least reduce their hours. In the meantime, the airport is also moving ahead with upgrades, including a new announcement and paging system in both terminals. The system will enable digital communications, which should make travel and safety announcements easier to understand. Mark. Thank you, Samuel. Area hospitals saw a third day of high COVID-19 admissions, and local leaders say that could lead to further restrictions. Right now, numbers of Bear County show just over 14% of hospital beds are occupied by COVID-19 patients. In September, Governor Greg Abbott said if the number reaches or exceeds 15%, it could lead to some rollbacks. That would mean businesses would have to reduce their occupancy from 75% back to 50%. But Dr. Colleen Bridger with Metro Health says we would need to reach that threshold and remain there for seven consecutive days before any restrictions are put in place. What I think we will see is a little bit of variability, a little bit of ups and downs. She says around this time of year, hospitals are usually busy handling flu cases, but the number of cases are down and COVID-19 cases are up. With a second holiday approaching, she urges people not to travel. It is 508 and 38 degrees. Still ahead, why Homeland Security is sounding the alarm on a popular TV brand that are in homes all across the country. And next, more and more museums are being forced to close and shut down because of the pandemic. How the Witty Museum needs your help to avoid being one of those museums. We made it to Friday. Hallelujah. Outside with live cam, another chilly start to our day. What is our weekend looking like? Last full weekend before the Christmas break, you're watching GMSA. Welcome back 5:11. One in three museums will be closed within the next three years because of the financial impact of the pandemic, according to the American Alliance of Museums. The Woody Museum plans on not being one of those museums. However, they can't do it without the community's help. I spoke with the CEO of the San Antonio Staple about its not out of the woods yet campaign. Known for teaching and inspiring South Texans through experiences in nature, science and culture for nearly 100 years, the Whitty Museum hopes they can continue to do so. Our calculated revenue loss for this year is between three and four million dollars. And that's a combination of membership and admissions and donations. Um, 
it's a lot. Maurice McDermott, the CEO and president of the Witty, says the nonprofit has done everything to stay open through this pandemic, even being one of the first museums in the country to reopen its doors to the public after the start of the pandemic. But the museum still needs the community's help, which is why they currently have the Not Out of the Woods Yet Recovery Fund. Every bit of our financial structure is down. Uh, so the recovery fund is a way to bring us back up, to provide a financial health uh, so that we can get through this pandemic. Another hit the witty has taken, the revenue from its weddings and events, which have been canceled since March. Another reason for the recovery fund. McDermott says the community can help by visiting the witty, becoming a member, visiting the witty's gift shop and donating online. So the witty can financially get out of the woods and continue to be an essential and safe place for families to learn. It's an almost 100 year old gathering place, the Witty Museum. People have depended on the Witty Museum for generations to learn together, to be together. And the nonprofit says the Witty is a large safe space to visit with your family. It's eight acres. Um, that includes indoor and outdoor spaces. And everyone, of course, is required to wear a mask while visiting. The Witty Museum open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5, and then on Sunday from noon to 5. All right, it is 513 and 38 degrees. Still ahead on the morning show, why a popular TV brand is causing the Department of Homeland Security to send out a warning. Plus how Google is letting you try on new makeup from your home virtually. Some of us, our daily journey is a short one. Save 50% when you pay per mile with Allstate. Pay less when you drive less. You've never been in better hands. Allstate, click or call for a quote today. Do lotion and jeans go together? A Nivea breathable experiment. Now they do. Moisturizes deeply with no sticky feel. The game-changing Nivea breathable. For bathroom odors that linger, try Febreze Small Spaces. Just press firmly and it continuously eliminates odors in the air and on soft surfaces for 45 days. Homeland Security Department is sounding the alarm on a popular TV brand in homes all across our country. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bites, a warning about a popular TV brand. A document obtained by ABC News says the Chinese government likely has influence over the electronics firm TCL, which makes some of the cheapest and best rated TVs on the market. It says TCL may be able to collect data from consumers through a back door. Google is launching a new feature that allows users to try out makeup virtually. For now, the feature only includes lipstick and eyeshadow and limited to just a few brands. And if you prefer not to try the products on yourself, you can see how they look on various models. And Pepsi fans have demanded Coca-Cola. The company said the flavor, which is Pepsi combined with hints of chocolate and marshmallow, would be produced if enough fans retweeted about it. That happened quickly. So Pepsi Coca-Cola will be out sometime next year. Enjoy. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. What do you think, Mark? I, 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 yeah, you asked me first. I was going to say I asked you first. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think like it's like one of those things you take like two sips of and you're like, I'm mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. I know Officer Nick Solis. You, I see, want you seem like a Pepsi guy for well, some reason. So my favorite set of all time is Pepsi Blue. And there just, you go. They just continued in 2004. Uh, I still miss Pepsi Blue. Yeah. So bring it back. Bring it back. I'll try Pepsi Coco, I guess. All right, here we go. Still looks good out there. A lot of green on the screen. No accidents. Traffic flowing smoothly. Let's jump straight to Trans Guy 281 at the quarry here. That looks good. Not even a car on the roadway there on the northeast side. 281 at Grayson, uh, south of there. That still looks good. That's flowing smoothly. And 35 at Binz Engelman, more northeast. Uh, that's flowing smoothly as well. What was Pepsi Blue? Pepsi Blue was uh, it was like a cotton candy kind of uh, flavored uh, ber berry. It was a berry Pepsi. Berry oh. Pepsi. Were you yeah, drinking okay. this as a kid or like recently? Oh, yeah, as a kid, I was popping them. Oh, you were probably <laughs> off the walls then. I love Pepsi Blue. <laughs> do you all remember uh, Clear Pepsi? Yes. Yes. They, they brought I it do. back three years ago. 
Oh, that's right, they did. That. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Coca-Cola girl, not a Pepsi. Me too. Yeah. And, and Pepsi-free and... Wait, you're a Coca-Cola Coca-Cola girl? Coca-Cola girl. Okay. And Zima, and wait, it's not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> remember that stuff? Anyway, um, beautiful, beautiful Christmas decorations out there in Hondo. Yes, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Claudia, for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. Going to be a, a decent looking sunrise, I think. We will have a few clouds, and there are some clouds that are trying to move on in here. And uh, dew point temperatures, albeit still very dry. I mean, you know, 60 is always that magic number. Yeah, we've got really dry air out there, but not as dry as what it was. As a matter of fact, these dew point temperatures have gone up about 10, uh, 15, almost 20 degrees compared to this time yesterday, and that's going to continue to be the case. The humidity will continue to go up throughout the rest of the afternoon, and that's going to be combining and helping out with some cloud cover. We've got a lot of high moisture coming in from the west and the surface moisture coming in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And that'll be the situation overnight in through tomorrow morning, but then we get another front coming on through here. It's more of a Pacific front this time. Uh, it's not really going to knock temperatures down. As a matter of fact, it will still be warm for high temperatures in behind it. When the drier air comes on in, that will allow temperatures to uh, low temperatures to drop down. So jackets in the morning, kind of about normal, and then probably not in the afternoons. Then after that, we've got a much bigger front next week. First of all, later on today, clouds continue to thicken up around here, and there could be a couple of sprinkly showers late tonight. That's kind of doubtful, but the rain chances tomorrow have actually gone up somewhat, and some folks may see a, a quarter of an inch of rain, maybe a little bit more than that. Then that's all going to continue to push off to the east throughout the uh, day. About the uh, noontime should start to come to an end, and then we'll clear out by tomorrow night. It's going to be fantastic then into Sunday, Monday, a couple of extra clouds then on Wednesday. So here's what the upper level steering winds look like. First of all, there's the big storm system that's moving on out of here. That's the one that dumped all the snow up to the uh, northeast. In behind it then, here's the little bit of a, a trough that comes through and gives us the brings through that kind of Pacific front tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow about noon or so and then that's going to clear us on out in behind that kind of mild conditions but by Wednesday that huge mass of cold air starts to work its way on in here and it looks like a say midday on Wednesday as of right now is when the front's going to move through it's going to be windy then in behind that and then we get these upper level wind lines coming almost straight out of Canada and this mass of cold air parked over the Great Lakes and that will continue to pump in the uh, cold air for Thursday, Christmas Eve, as well as Christmas Day. So it looks like we might see a couple of more freezing temperatures just in time for uh, Christmas as well. It's 57 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and clouds will continue to uh, thicken up throughout the day. 62 then for a high temperature today. Now tomorrow, actually late tonight, maybe a couple of sprinkles, but a better chance. I'm going to put at least about a 40% chance on uh, on rain and might have a you know decent shower here and there tomorrow morning. Then we clear out in the afternoon, making it into the upper 60s. So we are going to be, oh gosh, a good five, six, seven degrees above normal. And that'll be the case in through Tuesday. Then the big front moves through Wednesday. Awesome. Before I forget, Mike, because I know we're going to do lottery numbers here in a moment. Powerball is up to 304 million. Mega Millions is up to 310 million dollars. I need to go get a ticket. I Next know. Mega drawings tonight and Powerball tomorrow night. Unlucky. 523, 38 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Up next in your morning spotlight, Star Wars fans remembering the life of the actor who originally played the iconic bounty hunter, Boba Fett. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, one, two, Fireball two, daily four, four, nine, zero, zero, Fireball one. Cash five, 16, 17, 28, 31, 32. Texas two step, two, 26, 31, 32. Bonus ball, 26. This morning, Star Wars fans are remembering an actor that originally played one of the film series' most iconic characters. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. Jeremy Bullock, who played Boba Fett in the original Star Wars trilogy, has died. According to his agents, the 75-year-old English actor died peacefully surrounded by family due to complications from Parkinson's disease. Lord of the Rings star Ian McKellen has become one of the first known celebrities to get the COVID-19 vaccine. England's National Health Service shared these photos of McKellen getting his shot. 
The 81-year-old actor said he feels euphoric and has no hesitation in recommending the COVID-19 vaccine to anyone. Have you done ballet before? I used to be a stripper. Cardi B tries her hand at ballet and a few other things in her new reality show, Cardi Tries. The eight-part series streams on Instagram and Facebook starting this week and sees Cardi tackling things she's never done before, like making sushi and stunt car driving. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Do it, girl, do it. <laughs> that woke you up. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it'd be like watching a car wreck in slow yeah. motion, right? You yeah. just kind of got to take a Yes, Mike? Okay. Kind of makes the old days of Paris Hilton look kind of sane, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right now it is 527, 38 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, cybersecurity officials say dozens of entities may have been hacked by Russians. We'll have more details which agencies were affected. Uh, plus, as kids are getting new electronics soon, an important warning about the kinds of batteries that may be in some of those devices. And do you need an idea for dinner? We'll show you how to make Pioneer casserole. Mm, that's ahead. It is Friday, December 18th. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us. And it is a cold one. I walked out this outside this morning and saw my breath outside and got in the car. So my breath inside the car was like cranking the heat. Ooh, it's cold, Mike. About this time yesterday, Mike, weren't we at or just below freezing? Yeah, we had uh, we started off, and I'm going to show you that picture in just a second of the moon right there because it is a, a sliver moon. But yeah, we were already um, right around freezing. There were a lot of temperatures down in the 20s already at this time yesterday morning. Right now, looking off to the east, and there is uh, Venus. We don't really have any clouds looking off to the east, but I think we will start to see some sliding here from the uh, the west later on this morning. 38 right now, dew points at 34, so you can't drop down below that number. So if that stays, and it should stay, at 34 degrees, we will not hit freezing here in town this morning. And as a matter of fact, a lot of temperatures around the area, even out in portions of the hill country, it's nowhere near freezing. 38 Kerrville, 39 Fredericksburg, Rock Springs is at 41 as of right now. And there's not much of a breeze out there either, so we really don't have a wind chill to deal with. Mole is on the low side. No mountain cedar in yesterday's reading. Of course, we had it a couple of days ago. There is another front moving through tomorrow. Uh, it's not going to be too awfully windy. We'll see what that does with the mountain cedar and then another big one coming in here next week with the with some windy conditions. So we'll see if that shakes up those mountain cedar trees. 57 degrees today at noon and 62 for a high temperature. Basically a normal high. A lot of clouds throughout the day. Maybe a couple of showers tonight, but a better chance and actually a, a decent chance now it's uh, kind of gone up the chances for rain tomorrow morning then we will be clearing out how warm is going to be this weekend and then what about that next big front just in time for christmas details coming up in a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now and officer nick Solis just glancing at the map Nothing yeah big out there huh well yeah we got one accident mike uh, right now but other than that things are looking good all around the city but this one accident is going to be on the northwest side of town it's northbound west loop 1604 at Braun road main lanes just past that Braun road exit there uh keep that that in mind, not causing any traffic buildup yet. SAP is just getting on scene. Keep you advised on this accident. All right, taking a look outside of the trans guy, 281 at 410, looking good. I 10 at crossroads there in the central side of town looked great. 410 at San Pedro near North Star Mall. That looks good. And let's do one more here. We got 90 and 36 with that stalled vehicle still there on the right lane. Sarah. Thank you, Nick. Well, San Antonio police are trying to figure out if two shooting victims may have been wounded at the same place. Both men were found on the west side of town after running from the locations where they say they were shot. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters where police are trying to sort it all out. Good morning, Katrina. And what makes police think that they might be connected? Well, good morning. Uh, one detective told us at this point it's just a hunch. They don't know for sure. But both men were wounded late last night and within just a few miles of each other. Police answered the first call shortly after 11 o'clock last night at a convenience store in the 6800 block of West Military. They found a man in his 20s who had been shot in the leg. He told them he was shot by two men at an apartment complex nearby, then went to the store to call for help. About a half hour later, they found another man also in his 20s who had been shot and, the, and they found him in the 200 block of Jesse Avenue. He told police that the shooting happened somewhere else. The police never did find a crime scene. The man who was uh, the man was wounded in his stomach. Now the two locations where the victims were found 
are less than four miles apart. But again, police don't know for sure, but they are looking into the possibility that these shootings may be related. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 534, the United States dealing with another major setback, a huge computer hack. And cybersecurity experts say these data breaches spread wider than first thought. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The U.S. government reeling from a major hacking campaign. This is a fundamentally different attack than anything we've seen in the cybersphere to date. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, a branch of the Department of Homeland Security, suspects Russian hackers are breaking into government agencies, private companies, and other entities. Certainly the level of national and economic security uh, damage could be immense. Former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe says the hackers broke into SolarWinds Orion software and corrupted the updates the IT management firm delivers to organizations. That was really the, um, the genius of this attack. It was a way to get into virtually everywhere in a product that was widely used. Microsoft says more than 40 of its customers were targeted in this breach, with most of them in the U.S. The hack extends beyond the problematic software, and its full extent is not yet known, federal experts warn. A cyber hack of this nature is really the modern equivalent of uh, almost of Russian bombers um, reportedly flying undetected over the entire country. This is virtually a declaration of war by Russia on the United States, and we should take that seriously. Microsoft says 80% of the hacking victims are U.S.-based. Among the other countries also affected, Canada, the United Kingdom, Mexico, and Spain. I'm John Lawrence reporting. It's a hurry up and wait moment on Capitol Hills. Congressional negotiators try to pass nearly $1 trillion COVID-19 economic relief package. The holdups mean a weekend session now appears virtually certain and a top lawmaker warned that a government shutdown this weekend cannot be ruled out. All sides appear hopeful that the wrangling won't derail the legislation. More than $300 billion in aid would go to businesses. Also included a $300 per week bonus, federal jobless benefit, as well as $600 direct payments to individuals. Well, Twitter says that it will begin removing misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccinations from its site. Among posts that will be removed include those that have false claims the virus is not real, debunked claims about the effects of receiving the vaccine, and baseless claims that suggest the immunizations are used to harm or control people. Twitter said in a blog post that it will start enforcing this new policy next week. If people send tweets in violation of the rules, they will be required to delete them before they're able to tweet again. Time check 537, 38 degrees. Still ahead, an important warning about certain types of batteries that could be in your kids' new electronics that they get for Christmas. And a closer look at what is next now that a second COVID-19 vaccine has been recommended for emergency use by the FDA. 38 degrees at 537 this morning. Will things warm up? What is our weekend forecast? And what is our Christmas forecast, which is a week away or Christmas Eve? Well, it's six days away Christmas Eve. Mike will let us know when we come back. Welcome back 540. Soon we will have another weapon to help battle the coronavirus pandemic. A second vaccine has now been recommended for emergency use. CNN's Melissa Rainey has the latest. That concludes the vote. It looks like we have a favorable vote. An advisory panel is now recommending emergency use authorization of a second coronavirus vaccine in the United States. Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine could be hitting arms across the country as soon as Monday. It looks to be roughly 95% effective at preventing disease, including 100% effective at severe disease, about 95% effective in preventing disease in people who are over 65 across different ethnic backgrounds, racial backgrounds. This is confusion stirs surrounding distribution of the Pfizer vaccine, with states being told by the federal government that they will receive fewer doses next week. The White House says shipments are being held back for the second dose. The Pfizer vaccine goes out in two shipments, so uh, half of the vaccine, so 2.9 million going out this week, another 2.9 million would be held back for the second dose for those patients to receive in 21 to 28 days. Now with the nation facing its deadliest day since the beginning of the pandemic on Wednesday, the stress of constantly being surrounded by death day after day 
is taking a serious toll on healthcare workers on the front lines. We're already seeing a lot of PTSD-like symptoms, um, and especially the bedside providers, both physicians and nurses, as the you know waves continue. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. Right now it is 541, still 38 degrees. And next, if you're a pizza fan, Papa John's is adding a popular ingredient to its menu. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. From all of us at RBFCU, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to our veterans and active duty service members. Especially our son, Marine Captain Drew Norton, and daughter-in-law, Lieutenant Junior Grade Marissa Norton. We, we miss, miss you. you. about this week's recipe. It is Texas Toast Breakfast Casserole. It's the perfect thing for Christmas morning to feed the entire family. And it's actually a pioneer recipe. So pioneer chef Kelly Grable is going to be joining me this week to show you just how easy it is to make it at home. Here is what you're going to need. Texas toast, breakfast sausage, red and green bell pepper, make sure it's diced, a small onion diced as well, eight eggs, one package of Pioneer gravy mix prepared and cooled, some salt, and a half a cup of cheddar cheese. And you wanna take some nonstick spray and uh, spray it liberally all over the dish. And then you get six pieces of Texas toast and you can see they fit nice and snug in your nine by 13 dish here. Now preheat your oven to 350 and start cooking the sausage. When no pink remains, you can add the bell pepper and onion and cook until soft. Then pour uh, your meat and veggies over your Texas toast. Right. Make sure that you spread it nice and evenly. And then another dish, you have eight eggs and you're gonna take your Pioneer Country gravy that you've already prepped beforehand and make sure that it's cool because you don't wanna add it to the eggs and prematurely cook your eggs before you add it into your casserole dish. And then make sure that everything is nice and stirred and comes together. Pour it over your meat and vegetables. Next up, you set in the oven and bake for 20 to 30 minutes or until the casserole is set. And then while it's nice and hot, you take your cheese, sprinkle it over top, and you should have enough heat from the oven for the cheese to melt. To get a copy of this recipe, just head to our website, ksat.com. Enjoy and Merry Christmas. Well, Coca-Cola says it's cutting 2,200 jobs amid declining sales. That includes about 12% of its U.S. workforce. Coke's revenues declined about 9% in the third quarter. It's hurting due to the permanent or temporary restaurant closures and a resulting loss in soda sales over the summer. Coca-Cola said it was offering buyouts to about 4,000 workers in the U.S. and Canada. In October, it said it was canceling half its brands and focusing on popular items. Well, heads up, Sarah. Papa John's rolling out stuffed crust pizza starting today. It'll only be available for members of Papa John's Customer Rewards Program. Then non-members can begin ordering it on December 28th. It's only the second time the chain has changed its crust in its 35-year history. Last year, Papa John's released garlic Parmesan crust. Pizza's popularity has reached new heights in 2020 as more people started working from home. It's prompted a pizza rivalry, rivalry between companies. Papa John's, Domino's, and Pizza Hut, even Panera Bread, launching marketing campaigns to cash in on the pizza frenzy. More cheese. All right. Well, it's also time to show off your ugliest Christmas sweater. Today is National Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. The special day was started in 2011 as a way to lighten up the busy holidays. It's grown more popular every year and is now celebrated worldwide. Button batteries are common and found in many items, but they can be dangerous, especially if small kids get a hold of them. And with the holidays upon us, doctors are sending out a warning. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more. They're found in remotes, key fobs, toys, even some holiday carts. But button batteries can be dangerous if swallowed. This can be really fast. This can really critically injure a child and be fatal within a matter of hours. Dr. Manisha Agarwal has seen firsthand the dangers of button battery ingestions as a pediatric ER doctor at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. 
it can very easily become stuck in the esophagus. And even though the button battery might not be working for whatever toy or remote control it was in before, it usually still has some charge left. And so when that charge is in the esophagus, it can injure it, it can start eroding through the tissue, and that is what can usually cause significant damage and make that ingestion so fatal and deadly. Each year, U.S. poison control centers get more than 3,500 reports of button battery ingestions. Stopping it from happening is simple. Keep button batteries out of sight and reach for small children. Check the screws on toys and devices children have access to and keep loose batteries locked away. Finally, don't wait if you think your child may have ingested one. The most important thing you can do is to go immediately to your closest emergency department. Don't delay care. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 549. All right, Officer Nick, you were talking about stuffed crust Little Caesars. <laughs> stuffed crust Little Caesars is underrated. There, it's pretty good and for half the price of other competition. I... <laughs> All right, man. Let's get to what I'm an expert at here, traffic, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got a couple, we got an accident to deal with here. This is gonna be northbound West Loop 1604 at Braun Road. This is a one vehicle accident in which the vehicles rode over there right near that exit at Braun. Keep it in mind if you're headed that way, not causing too much traffic build up yet though. Still dealing with this stalled vehicle, eastbound US 90 at 36th Street. Um, it's still there. Hopefully they can get it up clear, cleared soon on the right shoulder. Be careful if you pass it up. I-10 at Hildebrand flowing smoothly. Traffic starting to pick up just a little bit, but uh, just, you know, it's still flowing pretty good. And 1604 in Bandera on the northwest side looks great as well. Well, Nick, if you watch carefully, Mike Ostrage is about to wax nostalgic about a waxing crescent moon. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you are going to talk about dominoes. <laughs> dominoes? No. Which originated up in, because uh, it was brand new, uh, rough, or newer when I was in college. Right. And, and we'd get them in Kalamazoo. All right, so. so for those not in the know, you, in your younger days, you did a, a Domino's Pizza commercial that aired in the greater Michigan area. Yeah. Yes, you did. And, and you, you it, was looked, a test, it was a test product uh, for double pizzas. Right. I so didn't know that. I was the singing delivery boy. Yeah. Stop. There's, vid there's video somewhere. We oh, need yes. this video. You remember your line, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Sing it, Although Mike. I, I Sing was it. all ad lib, so, or a uh, dub. Um, Lip sync, sorry. Right, you were singing. I did not sing, though. Okay. Person, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, look at the waxing, <laughs> as we wax nostalgic. <laughs> look at the waxing crescent moon. And it's going to be full on the 30th. Um, of course, near the moon and uh, this Jupiter and Saturn. And that's going to be especially the case on Monday when Jupiter and Saturn are the at closest point together. Now, off to the east there, that's Venus. It's rising, so obviously we've got some clear skies. We have dropped down now to freezing Bernie stage as well as Bulbar. Verde, and then some 30s and even 40s, though, out in portions of the hill countries. So overall, temperatures are up about mm, six, seven degrees. We had dropped down to 31 yesterday here in town. We had some 20s on the hill country yesterday, so it's much, much milder. There's really not much of a wind chill to deal with. We do pretty much obviously have uh, calm wind out there, and there's some moisture that's starting to build on in here as well. This is what we had the past couple of days, this darker shade of gray and even that kind of brownish shade, which means very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. But now more moisture is coming on in here, and that's going to help out with the cloud cover. Plus, we'll get moisture coming in from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico uh, over the course of not only today but through about noon tomorrow then we get another front to get all get rid of all of that uh, nothing is really showing up on the satellite picture as of right now and uh, up to the north northeast first of all there's the leftovers and it pretty much out of here that's the big storm system that dumped all of the uh, the snow up there uh, all throughout the northeastern uh, corridor the eastern seaboard as well measuring in feet in some places now we got another big system kind of a broad system moving across the country this is what is going to help out with some rain chances around here maybe late tonight but especially tomorrow and actually rain chances tomorrow morning have gone up somewhat and some folks may see Oh gosh, about a quarter of an inch of rain tomorrow morning, then that's going to move on through and clear us out. Here's what the upper level winds look like. Again, we've got this little bit of a trough, which is going to get rid of the humidity by tomorrow afternoon. That will allow temperatures to drop down. This is not going to be a big Arctic front that moves through tomorrow. It will just dry out the air, so that allow temperatures to cool down. But then on the flip side, we're going to be warming up and actually be on the warm side tomorrow afternoon through almost midweek. And then we've got another big, big 
chunk of cold air which is going to be settling on in here and that's going to move in just in time for uh, Christmas Eve as well as Christmas Day. It looks like that front's going to be arriving about midday on Wednesday. 57 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Clouds will continue to thicken up throughout the day and we'll hit a high temperature today up to 62 degrees, maybe a sprinkle or two later on uh, tonight, but tomorrow going to put a 40% chance of rain in the picture on tomorrow morning. Then we'll clear on out and nice and warm through Tuesday. Big front throughout the day Wednesday and much colder Thursday and Friday. Thank you, Mike. 554, 38 degrees. Let's take a look at some of these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, one, two, fireball two, daily four, four, nine, zero, zero, fireball one. New York cash five number 16, 17, 28, 31, 32, and Texas two step two, 26, 31, 32 with a powerball of 26. Welcome back. It's deadline day. Today is the last day for our KSAC community partners stuffing stockings for SA youth. You can help spread a little holiday cheer by donating small toys, arts and crafts and healthy snacks. The stuff a stocking drive ends today. We have more information right now at KSAC community. Dot com. It's been great having you with us this morning. Coming up on GMSA, the World Health Organization says tobacco kills more than 8 million people every year. That's why it's helping a million people quit tobacco worldwide. Just ahead, we'll tell you about some services they are offering so you can commit to quit. Checking Transky 35 at Loop 410. Traffic coming right at you in the opposite lanes. There's a few more cars and light traffic at I-10 at ProBan. San Antonio police are investigating two overnight shootings, and right now they're trying to figure out if they are connected. And coming up, a second vaccine gets approval, but COVID cases are still on the rise. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the very latest. Taking a look outside with live cam. What a clear look out there. 37 degrees, but is there rain in our future? Mike will let us know in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is December 18th. Time to take off and Sarah Costa joins our flight crew this morning. So happy to be here. Glad and you're it's here. A week Christmas exactly one week one away. One week away. Mike is getting ready. He's got a snowman tie and mm -hmm. cri Christmas tree cufflinks. Yes, I have. I have my little Christmas tree cufflinks on here. You've had that tie for years and it's one oh. of my favorites for Christmas time. You should get to wear, you know, twice a it, year. It's a like classic. That. Yeah, thank you very much. So anyway, yeah, I got getting in the Christmas spirit. And even though temperatures going into next week, uh, the first part of the week aren't going to feel too much like the season. Just wait till right about Wednesday and then also Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We got another big front moving on through here. Lots of clear skies right now. There's the planet Venus. It's 37 degrees, dew points at 33. And we only have a couple of readings that are below freezing as of right now. Um, 36 at Kerrville, 41 Rock Springs, 40 in Fredericksburg, just up around uh, Bernie Stage. And uh, uh, let's uh, that was reporting freezing just in the past hour. And it's not anywhere near as cold as what it was, of course, yesterday. Mold is on the low side. And throughout the rest of today, I think we uh, you know may drop down another degree or two. But the clouds are going to continue to kind of move on in here throughout the rest of the morning. And they will be thickening up as the day rolls on. We will make it up into the uh, kind of mid upper 50s today at noon, and I think we get enough cloud cover. We'll hold about low 60s right about normal later on today. Temperatures are going to stay very mild overnight. We'll only drop down maybe uh, 10, 15 degrees, right about 50 or so tomorrow morning. And then we do have those rain chances, which rain chances tomorrow morning are looking a little bit better, which is encouraging. Then we clear on out and good looking weekend. So more on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis and looking over your shoulder. I see an accident on 90. Well, it's, it's that same stall vehicle we've had all morning. My bad. Got good news. SAPD is on scene. Get this vehicle out of the way. So yeah, we'll get to you here dealing with one accident right now. We got northbound West Loop 1604 at Brown Road. Uh, one vehicle accident the vehicles rolled over there. Still trying to get that out of the roadway, not causing any traffic buildup yet, though. So that's good. All right, this is a stalled vehicle we saw here eastbound US 90 at 36th Street. Let's get straight to the trans guide here to show it. Uh, here's SAPD on scene trying to get it's either SAPD or one of the hero trucks. I'm going to try to tow it out of the way there. Just please be careful with those emergency lights. Slow down as soon as you see them and drive safely. Mark's there. Back to you.
Thank you, Nick. New this morning, one man is in the hospital after police say he was shot on the west side. Police said it happened just after 11 last night on West Military Drive near Highway 90. That is near Lackland Air Force Base. Police say two suspects shot him in the leg at a nearby apartment complex. The victim drove to a quick trip gas station before calling for help. He was taken then to University Hospital and is expected to recover. Meanwhile, San Antonio police say another man was taken to University Hospital with a gunshot wound to the stomach. Police say the man called for help from the 200 block of Jesse around 1130 last night. That's near 90 and Southwest 36th Street. Police say the shooting happened at another location, but they don't know where. They also say they, uh, they are also say they're investigating if the two shootings are possibly connected, but have not yet confirmed if they are. We are still waiting on more information on a northeast side shooting. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say two people were shot at a house on Whistler near Montgomery and Gibbs Sprawl. It happened around 930 last night. Deputies say an adult man and a juvenile man were shot. Deputies say they will give us in an update on that investigation later today. San Antonio International Airport has not been immune to the effects of the pandemic on air travel, and officials are hoping a new stimulus package in Washington, D.C. will provide a needed boost. Our Samuel King joins us live now. Samuel, are airports included in this time around? We're hearing they are included, and it could be a big sum of money. Anywhere from 3 to $4 billion could be divided among airports across the country. The decline in air travel has led to a ripple effect this year. Fewer passengers means less revenues for airports like in San Antonio. At the same time, they've had to spend more on things like sanitization procedures and new signage for social distancing. Now, San Antonio received more than $40 million in the first stimulus package for both the primary and secondary airports here. Director of Airports Jesus Sain says that's helped sustain operations this year, but help is needed to keep going over the long term. Not only everything that we do to own and operate these airport facilities, but more importantly, all of our stakeholders that work with us to ensure that we uh, continue to boost the economy and do all that we can. Those stakeholders include a concessions company. Sign says the latest bill being debated also includes a half billion dollars that would allow airports to help those companies. Those are the ones who provide food and retail services. Many of them have had to lay off their employees or at least reduced hours. But some upgrades do continue in the meantime, including a new announcement and paging system out at the airport. This will allow more digital communications in both terminals, which should make travel and safety announcements easier to understand. Sarah and Mark. Thank you, Samuel. Local health officials are reporting 1,606 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nierenberg says the seven-day moving average is now up to 1,100 cases a day. He says 837 patients are being hospitalized. 104 need uh, intensive care over the past 24 hours. Currently, 10% of staff beds are available here in Bear County. Local leaders say the increase in coronavirus hospitalizations could lead to more restrictions. Right now, numbers show that 14% of all hospital beds in Bear County are being used by patients diagnosed with COVID-19. In September, Governor Greg Abbott said more restrictions would happen if it reaches 15%. That would mean businesses would have to reduce their occupancy down to 50 percent. But Dr. Colleen Brid Bridger with Metro Health says we would need to reach that threshold and remain there for seven consecutive days before those restrictions take place. What I think we will see is a little bit of variability, a little bit of ups and downs. Dr. Bridger says she is urging people not to travel this year to help keep the number of hospitalizations and infections down. City of San Antonio looking to stretch a rent assistance program into March. So far, far nearly $65 million has been allocated for the program, but the city says they will have additional federal funding to help it last longer. Assistant City Manager Lori Houston says the program has been successful and the City Council could vote on the full extension early next year. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. Well, a second COVID-19 vaccine is on its way to be approved for authorization. Moderna could see its vaccine shipped out by the end of this weekend. Meanwhile, states are feeling the pressure of an explosion of cases after the deadliest day of the pandemic to date. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. And good morning. When Operation Warp Speed went into effect earlier this year, health officials had predicted a vaccine wouldn't be available till around spring 2021. So while these two vaccines may be ahead of schedule, the U.S. is still reeling. Deaths and hospitalizations are on the rise, with some patients even dying while waiting for a hospital bed. 
Amid the rising number of COVID cases, an FDA advisory panel approves a second vaccine made by Moderna. Looks like we have a favorable vote. Unlike Pfizer's vaccine, Moderna's can be stored in regular freezers, making it easier to distribute to more remote parts of the country. Studies show the Moderna vaccine is 94% effective in preventing symptomatic cases of COVID-19, similar to the Pfizer vaccine already being used nationwide. Health officials hope the two vaccines take the wind out of the surging number of cases, but the COVID tracking project is reporting a record high number of deaths from the virus in the U.S. for the second week in a row. Intensive care units across Southern California now at full capacity. You have to pick which one of your patients has the best chances of making it, and that's one you're going to have to give most of your care to. California is not alone. A new forecast shows the southeast faces an especially high risk for a surge in cases, including Atlanta, the Carolinas, and Tennessee. And it's a two-front fight, from the health emergency to the economic crisis. On Capitol Hill, there is still no deal for an economic relief bill, but both sides insist that they are close, with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell telling his colleagues to be prepared to work through the weekend if they can't strike an agreement today. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News in Washington. 609, 37 degrees. The Spurs are going into the regular season without winning a preseason game. But the team thinks they can break out of an early slump and start strong. Museums around our country are facing severe financial hardships, and many may have to close down, close down for good as a result. After the break, we'll take a look at what the Witte Museum here in San Antonio is doing to make sure they can stay afloat. But first, let's take a look outside with live cam. 37 degrees at 609 this morning. It is chilly out there and feeling like the holidays. Will these cool temperatures stay around this week? Michael, let us know when we come back. Six thirteen. One in three museums will close within the next three years because of the financial impacts of the pandemic. That's according to the American Alliance of Museums. The Whitney Museum plans on staying open. However, they can't do it without the community's help. I spoke with the CEO of the San Antonio Staple about its not out of the woods yet campaign. Known for teaching and inspiring South Texans through experiences in nature, science and culture for nearly 100 years, the Whitty Museum hopes they can continue to do so. Our calculated revenue loss for this year is between three and four million dollars. And that's a combination of membership and admissions and donations. Um, it's a lot. Maurice McDermott, the CEO and president of the Witty, says the nonprofit has done everything to stay open through this pandemic, even being one of the first museums in the country to reopen its doors to the public after the start of the pandemic. But the museum still needs the community's help, which is why they currently have the Not Out of the Woods Yet Recovery Fund. Every bit of our financial structure is down. Uh, so the recovery fund is a way to bring us back up, to provide a financial health uh, so that we can get through this pandemic. Another hit the Witty has taken, the revenue from its weddings and events, which have been canceled since March. Another reason for the recovery fund. McDermott says the community can help by visiting the Witty, becoming a member, visiting the Witty's gift shop and donating online. So the Witty can financially get out of the woods and continue to be an essential and safe place for families to learn. It's an almost 100 year old gathering place, the Witty Museum. People have depended on the Witty Museum for generations to learn together, to be together. And the nonprofit says the Witty is a large and safe space to visit with your family. It's eight acres indoor and outdoor, and everyone is required to wear a mask. The Witty is open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays from noon to 5. All right, it's 6.15 and 37 degrees. Let's check traffic. Here's Nick. Ah, thanks, Mark. Okay, right now, a uh, stalled vehicle getting worked on getting out of the way there. Accident just cleared up there on Bryan in 1604. So let's take a look at some drive times here. All right, taking us to the north side of town. If you're southbound 281 Bolverde, from 1604, looks like you have, you have an eight minute ride. 281 North, 1604 to Bulberti, eight minutes as well. Sorry, you can't see that graphic is in my head there, but eight minutes there, not, not bad at all. All right, outside, here's 90 and 36. Uh, stalled vehicle still right there on that right shoulder. Hopefully you can get cleared up soon. If not, sorry, but just please be careful when driving near it. Mark? Thank you, sir. Morning, Mike. Good morning. 
Good morning. I was just looking at some of the uh, latest computer model data, the long range computer models, and it's still consistent with that front next week moving through about noon or so on Wednesday. Colder so. for Santa's arrival. Yeah, yeah, uh, not anything maybe close to freezing, obviously freezing uh, perhaps in, in parts of the hill country, but it's still obviously a week away, but uh, it is looking encouraging. This morning we have temperatures that are, yeah, it is chilly, grab a jacket. We may drop down another couple of degrees here in town, not as cold as what it was yesterday. And uh, we've got a couple of clouds that are trying to move on in here. And then later on today, we are gonna be up uh, right around 62 degrees, normal high temperature. And we could get warmer, but the cloud cover, I think, is going to help to uh, kind of keep temperatures somewhat in check today. But we are going to be warming up over the next couple of days. All right. The big news, of course, in the next few days is going to be Jupiter and Saturn. There, of course, is the crescent moon. There's Jupiter and Saturn, and they're going to get their closest point in about 800 years. And, and that is going to be at their very closest in the sky will be on Monday. So it should be really good viewing weather for that coming up here the next uh, couple of evenings. So looking off to the east, obviously we don't have anything going on. Uh, there's the planet Venus and uh, nothing going on as far as any uh, cloud cover out there right now. But we do have a lot more moisture coming in here from the west. So we'll start to see you know, some of those clouds moving on in throughout the morning hours. And then the humidity is also going to start to come up uh, from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And so that's going to add to the clouds kind of thickening up throughout the rest of the morning and by noon then later on this afternoon, basically just cloudy skies. This particular computer model is a little more uh, say anxious as far as getting the rain coming on here. So there is a chance I think for a couple of showers late tonight, but the better chance of rain is going to be tomorrow and it is looking and this is looking at all different uh, computer models. It is looking more encouraging for some rain around here tomorrow in the first portion of the day up through about noon and then the next front's going to move on in here. It's more of a Pacific front, which means it's going to get rid of the, the humidity. So the air is going to be drying out again, but it's not like it's going to be a blast of cold air. Now it will tomorrow morning. First of all, we are going to be very, very mild thanks to the cloud cover as well as the humidity. Uh, but then with the lower humidity, that's going to allow temperatures to drop to basically normal readings going into next week. Now around the country, yeah, it's, it's cold out there, seasonally cold in places, but up in Canada, there's just some ridiculously cold up cold air up there, and that's going to start to work its way down in toward Hudson Bay and in toward the Great Lakes as we go into next week. And that's what will then help drive that big front through here next week. 57 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies and then basically just cloudy skies, perhaps a uh, you know, one or two uh, little holes in the clouds here and there. 62 for a high temperature today. Maybe a sprinkle late tonight, but primarily tomorrow morning we will have some rain. And some folks could see a quarter of an inch of rain, which is very good news. Not everybody's going to see a, a whole bunch, though. Then we'll clear on out up to 69 degrees. You know, very mild start tomorrow thanks to the clouds and the humidity. Then cooler the next few mornings, but we warm up big time upper 60s, well above normal all the way through Tuesday and even Wednesday. But that front's going to move through. Looks like about, say, noon, and it's going to get windy in the afternoon on Wednesday and then colder for Thursday and Christmas. When the Christmas tree becomes the tree topper for your sunshine on yes, indeed. Thursday. Yep. All right. Thank good you, flying Mike. weather for Santa next Thursday. Mm -hmm. night, it looks like. oh. Great. Thanks, Mike. Right now we are 619, 37 degrees. Well, Dr. Jill Biden is pushing back against the opinion piece that said the fir future first lady should drop the title doctor from her name. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Here's to the doers. To all the people who realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. 
Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, Dr. Jill Biden fires back. It was really the tone of it that I think that, um, you know, he called me kiddo. Overnight, America's next first lady defending the title she worked so hard to achieve. One of the things I'm most proud of is uh, is my doctorate. I mean, I worked so hard for it. And, uh, and my, you know, Joe came when I defended my thesis. Earlier this week, the Wall Street Journal published the op-ed in which the author claimed Biden should not be called doctor because her degree is not in medicine. The comments sparking outrage, many calling the op-ed sexist and misogynistic. I've been suppressing my Irishness for a long time. I was just overwhelmed by uh, how gracious people were. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about the famous faces coming out to support the future First Lady. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. The NBA preseason is over for the Silver and Black, and the Spurs not, not win a single game. They lost to the Rockets last night, 128-106, although it's just the preseason. The Spurs have not been able to put all the pieces together on any given night. Players stood out at moments, but as a team, the Silver and Black were down 30 points going into the fourth last night. After the game, DeMar DeRozan was talked about the cold shooting streak. Um, you got to keep shooting. You know, a lot of those shots were good shots. You know, um, we're still trying to get out the kinks. Um, it was due to have a game like that. Rather have it now to understand, you know, um, other ways we could, we could continue to get those shots, but at the same time, mix in, um, being aggressive, trying to get to the free throw line, kind of get a different type of rhythm going from there, then work our way back out. Next up for the San Antonio Spurs, first game of the regular season. Tip-off scheduled for 7 o'clock Wednesday night. They will be in Memphis to play the Grizzlies. Watching regular season games for the Spurs now may be more difficult for all of us. Popular streaming services like YouTube TV, Hulu, and Sling dropped Fox Sports regional networks, including Fox Sports Southwest. If you use a streaming service, that means you won't be able to see the th 35 of the first 37 Spurs games. To find out the options you have, just head over to ksat.com and click on our sports tab. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. In the NFL, both the Cowboys and Texans play this weekend. Cowboys trying to make a long shot push to the playoffs. They host the San Francisco 49ers in Arlington at noon on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans are already out of playoff contention. They'll play the Colts in Indy uh, at noon on Sunday as well. Don't forget there's NFL action on Saturday as well. All right, it's 626 and 37 degrees. Learning more about a massive cyber attack that targeted several federal agencies. One security expert is calling this a grave risk. Tonight is the deadline for Congress to pass a spending bill to avoid a federal shutdown. And Senator Mitch McConnell says he will keep the Senate in session until a deal can be reached. And with gunshot wounds, could the shootings be related? That's what San Antonio police are trying to figure out. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Vice President Mike Pence will get his COVID-19 vaccine today on live TV. It's all an effort to convince skeptics to get the shots. And outside with live cam, not as cold as yesterday morning, but still plenty chilly out there for most folks. We have a beautiful weekend in store. Let's see if there's a chance of rain out there as well. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. <laughs> it is December 18th. That A in the beautiful is taking a break. It slept in because it was too cold. We'll take an A for 500, but right now we'll stick with 37 degrees, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> yeah, still pretty chilly out there. Not as cold as yesterday. And uh, just looking at that picture and take that full, that's the planet Venus out there. And you can see the glow, the early hints of a sunrise. We don't have any clouds looking off to the east. We will start to see more clouds kind of moving on in here and uh, sliding on in from the west as the morning progresses progresses, pardon me, uh, dew points at 33. So that number, that's the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. 
That's also up compared to yesterday, and it's been the higher dew points that has not allowed temperatures to cool down quite as much as what it did yesterday. We do have a couple of freezing readings. Uh, Balverde is at freezing, excuse me, Bernie stage freezing. Balverde was at freezing just last hour. 41 in comfort, and think about it, some of these numbers were down in the 20s uh, yesterday, even mid to lower 20s, so much, much milder this morning, and we do have a low amount of mold that's showing up in the atmosphere. So increasing clouds throughout the day, maybe a shower late, late tonight, but a better chance of rain overnight and the first part of the day tomorrow. And actually that rain chance, which wasn't looking all that great to begin with, has now kind of up. So a fairly good shot at some rain. Some folks may get a quarter of an inch of rain and then we'll have sunshine in the afternoon. Temperatures are going to be on the warm side. We'll have uh, coolish mornings, warm afternoons in through about midweek and then just in time for Christmas. Pretty good front moving on through here by the middle of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Well, right now, Mike, uh, not much. Have the stalled vehicle here in 90 and 36. Uh, but other than that, no heavy pockets of traffic, no accidents right now. If you are headed to work, you got a smooth ride. You got time to put some gas because things look good. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some drive times. OK, so if you're coming from the city of New Braunfels, southbound on 35 to San Antonio, it's a 28 minute ride. Now you come all the way uh, Southwest over here, you come in uh, eastbound from on 35 south from Lytle into the city limits, 18 minutes. Lavernia eastbound on 87 to San Antonio or westbound, I'm sorry, only 26 minutes, so still looking good there. All right, taking a look outside of the trans guide, 90 and 36. We're still trying to work on this stalled vehicle on the right shoulder. Traffic definitely picking up though on that eastbound lane, so just please be careful when and use caution when passing this stalled vehicle and emergency lights out there. All right, well, here to talk about a, a 90 and some closures is Sam. Sam, what's going on? Yeah, right here in this area, Nick, in a little bit, we're going to have a closure here on the frontage roads. We've been having these all week from West Military Drive to 36, where you saw that stalled vehicle. They're doing some milling and paving work there, so watch out for those alternating closures onto frontage roads. Uh, moving on now to Nacogdoches Road in town here, there's going to be a closure between East Nottingham and Broadway. Uh, today through Sunday, there's going to be a construction crew putting up a crane in the area. Area. It should reopen, as I said, on Sunday. And up in, good, in New Braunfels, good morning to you. Work continues on 35 up there. The turnarounds at FM 306 have been closed this week. They should be closed through Sunday, wrapping up that project. Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, two men have ended up in a similar, similar situation, both in the hospital with gunshot wounds. Now San Antonio police are trying to determine if their cases may be connected. Our Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. Good morning, Katrina. Do police have any suspects in mind? Good morning, Sarah. It doesn't appear so. In fact, in one case, they're not even sure where the shooting happened. The police found the first victim around 11 last night at a convenience store in the 6800 block of West Military. He told police he had been shot by two men at an apartment complex nearby. He was taken to a hospital with a gunshot wound in his leg. Then about a half hour later, police found another shooting victim in the 200 block of Jesse Avenue. He also told them he had been shot at another location. He suffered a gunshot wound to his stomach. Police searched the area but did not find anything that looked like a crime scene, so they're not sure where that one happened. Now, the two victims who are both in their 20s were found less than four miles apart, and that's one of the reasons police say that these two shootings could be connected, but right now they are simply not sure. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Vice President Mike Pence is scheduled to get the first uh, shot of the COVID-19 vaccine today on live television. It's scheduled to take place around 7 o'clock this morning. The vice president will publicly get the vaccine to help reassure skeptics that are worried about possible dangers. Members of Congress will follow. According to protocol, representatives and senators are considered to be part of essential operations for the continuity of our government. However, President Donald Trump is not scheduled to get his vaccination at this time. The president's not held a public event since the largest vaccination campaign in history started either. An advisory committee for the FDA voted to recommend emergency authorization of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. Now the FDA will review the committee's notes and decide whether to authorize it. If the FDA signs off on it, the CDC must then greenlight the vaccine before shots can be administered. The CDC is expected to meet tomorrow. Meanwhile, Moderna says it will offer its vaccine to trial participants who receive the placebo, placebo if it is approved. 
Federal government funding set to expire at midnight tonight if Congress does not reach a deal that would cause the federal government to shut down. Congressional leaders want to tie the relief deal to $1.4 trillion funding bill, which would keep the government up and running through next September. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Senate will stay in session until a compromise is reached. This morning, we're learning more about a cyber attack that targeted the federal government. Several U.S. departments have had information compromised in an attack that went undetected for months. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, the number of government agencies impacted by a suspected Russian cyber attack is growing. A new analysis by Microsoft shows the breach is international, with at least seven countries affected, including Canada and Israel. But 80% of the accounts affected were in the U.S. So what's so scary about it is we could wait to see any decision from the hackers, appear to be the Russians, on what they choose to do with those networks. The Departments of Commerce, Treasury, Homeland Security and State, even the National Institutes of Health have been compromised. And now ABC News confirms the Energy Department's Nuclear Security Agency, which oversees the nuclear weapons stockpile, has been breached. According to the department, the hack impacted non-classified systems and not those involving national security functions. But intelligence officials acknowledge the hack, quote, poses a grave risk to federal and local governments as well as critical infrastructure. What I'm really worried about is what they might do beyond spying to mess with our public and its trust of its institutions. Sources say the breach allowed Russians to view emails of U.S. officials apparently going undetected for nearly six months. The White House has not issued a response to the attack. Senator Mitt Romney calls that silence stunning. A cyber hack of this nature is really the modern equivalent of uh, almost of Russian bombers um, reportedly flying undetected over the entire country. And they didn't drop bombs, but they, they had the capacity to show that our, our defense is extraordinarily inadequate. Investigators say it'll take weeks, maybe even months, to determine the cyber attack's overall impact. Andrew Dimber, ABC News in Washington. President-elect Joe Biden expected to nominate U.S. Representative Deb Holland from New Mexico as his Interior Secretary nominee. That's according to the Associated Press. If confirmed by the Senate, Representative Holland would be the first Native American to lead the department. The Interior Department oversees management and conservation of nearly 75% of all federal lands and is responsible for programs related to Native Americans, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians. If she becomes the secretary, New Mexico would need to hold a special election to replace her in the House of Representatives. The president-elect is also expected to nominate Michael Reagan of North Carolina to run the Environmental Protection Agency. That's according to the Associated Press. Reagan runs a North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. He is scheduled to be introduced with other members of Biden's climate team if confirmed by the Senate. He would be the first African-American to lead the EPA. A federal grand jury has indicted six men with conspiracy to kidnap Michigan Governor, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Authorities say the men were motivated by a belief that Whitmer was overreaching her powers on coronavirus restrictions. The indictment says they ordered $4,000 in explosives from an undercover FBI agent in September. Then, in October, four of them met with the agent and used cash as a down payment. If convicted, they could get life in prison. In your morning consumer news, there is a warning about a popular TV brand you have in your home or you could have in your home. ABC News obtained documents that say the Chinese government likely has influence over the electronics firm TCL. The company makes some of the cheapest and best rated TVs on the market. The documents say TCL may be able to collect data from consumers through a back door. Twitter says it'll begin removing misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine. Twitter says posts will be removed that include false information about the virus being fake, effects of the vaccine, and debunked claims and about it being used to control people. The policy goes into effect next week. If you send a tweet that breaks one of those rules, you'll be required to delete it before being able to tweet again. It is 640 and 37 degrees. Recently, we reported the World Health Organization is helping a million people quit tobacco worldwide. After the break, a look at what services they're offering so you can commit to quit. 644, it is not necessarily easy to quit smoking, but as we first reported a couple of weeks ago, the World Health Organization wants to help. 
The organization recently launched a commit to quit campaign aimed at helping 100 million people around the world put down the tobacco for good. RJ Marquez tells us how they plan to reduce the number of smokers in just one year. The World Health Organization says more people around the world have been trying to quit tobacco products this year. That's because smoking increases the chance of serious illness or death from COVID-19. The Commit to Quit initiative started December 8th and will go on through next year. The WHO says it will focus on high burden countries and the United States is one of them. The organization recognizes that quitting tobacco products is challenging, especially with added social and economic stresses during the pandemic. So they are creating a community of quitters to help get people through. The first is by publishing a list of 100 reasons to quit smoking. It shows how tobacco impacts the smoker and everyone around them and even shows how much money an average smoker spends spends on the products. The World Health Organization also started a way to chat with someone on WhatsApp. The goal is to keep people who want to quit connected with others and open a platform for someone to reach out for help whenever they need it. The WHO is also working with all governments to ensure everyone has access to brief advice, toll-free quit line, mobile and digital services, and nicotine replacement therapies. If you want to check out these resources, we have them available right now on KSAT.com. RG Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Coming up, Mike's forecast and probably the KSAT Connect picture of the week. But first, we check in with Officer Nick. Yes, yeah, Sarah, right now on the highways, things look good. Not a lot of heavy uh, pockets of traffic, uh, no construction zones. We are dealing with one accident right now. It's going to be at Ingram Road at uh, US Highway 51 Access Road there. So uh, keep that in mind. It's already causing some traffic buildup. You can see right there on Ingram Road here, the red buildup there on the traffic. So just please be careful and expect a delay if you are heading on Ingram Road. All right, let's go straight to the Trans Guy. 37 and Jones looks good right here. Southeast, uh, south, the southeast side. I-10 at West Avenue, that looks great. And we'll do one more. I-10 at Woodline, flowing smooth traffic, definitely picking up. Just may remember, two hands on the steering wheel, and wear that seatbelt. Thank you, Nick. All right, who's your friend back there, Mike? This is so great. Okay, the name is Bo Peep Von Winkelheine, and she was helping out with some <laughs> of the lights. Who has felt like this, that you're just, you know, checking out all the lights, you get sort of tangled up in the mess. She was trying to help out with the porch decorations and then no. just had enough of it. So. She, she doesn't even need any decoration. She's just so precious. Oh, peep on wrinkle, Heidi. But look, at least, you know, all the, the lights are lit there. But that is just a great picture. Thank you very much for that. All oh, so done with the decorating nonsense there. Appreciate that. All right, gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise this morning. Obviously, looking off to the east, we really don't have any clouds to uh, deal with. But, and there's the dry air that we've had the past couple of days, this darker shade of gray. And uh, that's why we've had those beautiful blue skies. And right now, looking off to the east. But here comes some more moisture moving in there from the west. And that's going to help help with more clouds sliding in here. Plus, we're going to get more moisture building in here from the uh, so the Gulf of Mexico. And so we'll start to cloud up throughout the morning hours. And then by the afternoon, we'll have plenty of clouds. A couple of computer models are trying to scare up a shower or two, maybe late tonight. Possible, kind of doubtful, but tomorrow morning and uh, and things are looking a little bit more encouraging as far as some rain around the area tomorrow morning. Uh, perhaps some folks get a quarter of an inch of rain, maybe a little bit more than that in spots. And then that's all going to be pushed on out of here with the next front that moves on through by about noon tomorrow. So that's going to get rid of some of the uh, the humidity. So the humidity builds back in tonight through tomorrow morning and then it drops down. Now this is not going to be technically technically yes, a cold front, but it'll be more Pacific in nature where it's just going to dry things out. Yes, that will allow temperatures to be on the cool side, normal readings, then warm up quite a bit. So we are going to be getting up into the upper 60s and even close to 70 for the first part of the week. And then the humidity is going to really start to build back in here by Wednesday again. And then the bottom drops out because that's the next really big front that will be moving on in here as we go on into uh, about noon or so, midday Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday, some cooler air. So here's the next storm system, which is going to be giving us that chance for some rain. The heart of that stays well up there to the north of us, and it will pull down some of that cooler air. But right now there's nothing just, well, except for Caribou, Maine, but nothing just off the charts cold, but that really, really cold air up here. And as a matter of fact, it's continued to get colder throughout the morning hours up there in Canada. That will work its way down in toward the Great Lakes as we get into next week by Tuesday, Wednesday. And then that eventually will help to push that front on through here. So we get a little uh, 
Well, obviously not that cold, but we do cool down considerably for the end of next week. 57 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy sky. Can you imagine 47 degrees below zero? That's the actual air temperature up there. 62 right now, or this afternoon, beg your pardon, uh, with cloudier skies. And then overnight, we will start to see a couple of showers trying to move on in here. And... Um, Hell, an okay chance for some rain tomorrow, about a 40% chance or even better in places. We'll start off really mild, get up in the upper 60s, then cooler the next few mornings, but very warm afternoons through Tuesday. Winter officially begins early Monday morning, and we get that next shot of cold air and windy conditions on Wednesday and colder Thursday and Friday for Christmas. I went and looked at Christmas lights two nights ago and had hot chocolate, and it yep. was so cold, and I was like, ooh, this South Texas feels like real Christmas. In the next couple of evenings doing that, not going to be as cold. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 650, 37 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Well, whether it's for your job to relax, many of us sit for long periods of time. Tomorrow on GMSA, why experts consider being glued to a chair all day as the new smoking. Oh, boy. Mm -mm. Outside with live cam. Check on that sunrise one more time. It's another beaut. You're watching GMSA. Top stories coming up and uh, another check of traffic with Nick. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the FDA panel recommending authorizing Moderna's COVID vaccine. Now, Moderna standing by ready to ship 6 million doses as soon as it gets the green light. Plus, Walgreens is starting a new program today, vaccinating folks and the staff who live and work in nursing homes. We're going to talk exclusively and live with Walgreens chief medical officer. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Police are trying to figure out whether two late night shootings are actually part of one case. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say all the signs are there. They both involve victims who are in their 20s and they were found within just a few miles of each other. The officers responded to a convenience store in the 6800 block of West Military around 11 last night. They found a man in his 20s who had been shot in the leg. He told police it happened at a nearby apartment complex and that there were two men involved in the shooting. About a half hour later, less than four miles away, they found another man shot in the stomach. He was in the 200 block of Jesse Avenue, but also told police that he had been shot somewhere else. And because of the locations and the similar circumstances, police are looking into the idea that these two shootings may be connected, but at this point, they're not sure. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. On a lighter note, if you're looking for some holiday cheers, we count down to the new year. You'll want to tune in SA Live Christmas primetime show tonight. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, Jen Tobias Strutsky joins us live to debrief what went into making that Christmas special and why everyone should check it out. In the meantime, it's five minutes till seven. Here is Officer Nick Solis. All right, Mark, just dealing with this one accident here. Uh, 151 Access Road at Ingram Road causes some big traffic buildup on Ingram Road inside the loop of uh, 151 there. I'm sorry, uh, well, inside 151. So just be careful, expect a delay if you're in this area. Mike? Big shout out quickly to Jen. She did a fantastic job. She was a producer of that show and uh, did a wonderful job putting that all together. So check that out tonight at 7 o'clock. Beautiful sunrise this morning as we approach 7 a.m. And a couple of freezing readings now down to freezing at Randolph. Same thing, Bernie stage. Otherwise, temperatures are up compared to yesterday. We are going to have uh, clouds increasing throughout the day. 57 at noon, 62 for a high temperature and a chance of rain tomorrow morning. Then we clear on out and another big front by the end of next week, middle of next week. All right, folks. Don't forget Powerball 304 Mega 310 million dollars. We'll buy your tickets. We'll see you at nine. <laughs>